until we start digging into the math of the one way integral. All right, so first thing we need to do is inform you how this all is working and set up the notation. All right, so what we can imagine is that we have m groups, so that means we have m different means, u1, u2, up to mu m. So what we do is we take a populate take a sample of size ni from the ice population. All right, so like you go to population one, you take a sample of size N1. Then you go to population two, take a sample of size N2, and so on. Um, in other words, all these sample sizes don't have to be the same across the different populations. All right, so once you have that sample from each one of those populations, we can get our total sample size N by just adding up the sample sizes of each of those uh, samples. All right, so N equals just the sum of the N. All right, so then we need to define our random sample. So the sample that we take is denoted by xi ni. So this is a random sample of size ni from the ice population. And we're going to assume that these populations have a normal distribution with mean ui for the ice population and then a shared variance sigma squared. So this is an assumption we're making that the variance is shared across the different populations. All right. So we have our samples, xi, ni, from each of those ice populations. We can think about the mean for each of those populations. So like, what's the mean for population one, what's the mean for population two, and so on. All right, so our sample mean for the ice population, we just add up our sample and then divide by the sample size. So we took a sample of size ni from the ice population, so we're di dividing by that ice populations, that ice groups sample size. And then here, this is just saying we're adding up all of the measurements that we took from that ice population. All right, so we denote this by x bar, and then in the subscript, we have i and then a dot. So that dot just means that we're um, averaging across that second subscript there, the, which, which is shown as j here. All right, so this is how we're going to denote the sample mean taken from population i. All right, so then how are we going to denote our overall mean? We're going to denote it with x bar with two dots in the subscript because we're averaging over both of those subscripts. All right, so we divide by our overall sample size and we need to add up all of the observations. We need to add up all of our measurements. So the way that we can think about doing this is go to each one of these different groups. So like, let's imagine right now we're at population one so then i would be equal to one, and then we're going to add up all of the measurements we took from population i. So we're going to add up xi1, xi2, xi3, and so on. So we add up all of those measurements from the um, population i equals one, and then we add up all the measurements from population i equals two, and so on, until we add have added up all of these different measurements. So we've added up all the different measurements and just divided by the sample size, that's their overall mean. All right, so we have our group means as our overall mean. Now we can start actually talking about variability. So remember in one way ANOVA, we're interested in measuring the variability within groups and the variability between groups because we wanna compare those to see if the variability between groups is really big compared to the variability within groups, then that probably means that we can reject our null hypothesis in favor of our alternative. All right, so how do we measure the variability between groups? Well, let's denote this by SST. So this T is like, if we're thinking about doing an experiment, we have different treatments. So the T here means the treatment for the, um, the treatment here. And SS indicates like sum of squares. So that'll make sense because we're adding up a bunch of things that are squared. All right, so what is the sum of squares for the treatment? Well, Let's think about this intuitively for a second. We're measuring the variability between groups. So in other words, we want to look at all of these different sample means and see how much variability there is. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to compare each sample mean against the overall mean. So we take each one of these sample means and subtract off the overall mean. So that says how far apart those two things are. And then we square it and multiply by the sample size for that ice population. Okay, so this is going to give us our treatment sum of squares. So again, this is measuring the variability between the different sample means. 
All right, and then later we'll use this notation. MST is the sum of squares for T divided by M minus one. So remember, M is our number of populations, our number of groups. So what we're doing here is we're taking our total sum, of, our treatment sum of squares, and then dividing by the number of groups minus one. So we can think of this kind of like as the mean sum of squares for the treatment. All right. Next thing we need to look at is measuring the variability within groups. Okay, so what does it mean to have variability within groups? Well, we could look at each group's mean and then see how much the sample varies for that ice population. So we're, say we're talking about population one, we look at the sample mean for population one and then we see how much variability is there in the measurements from population one, how much variability is there around that sample mean from population one. Okay, so say let's work with I equals one for now. Um, we go and we take each one of those measurements from sample one and we compare it to the sample mean for sample one. So we're finding all of these differences, squaring them and adding them up. All right, so now we've done this part for I equals one. Now we need to do it for I equals two, I equals three, all the way to I equals M. So we're adding up all of those squares and that will be our sum of squares, sum of squares for the error. Okay, so we can think about it kind of like as error because um, we're looking at the variability around some sample mean. And then the mean squared error is going to be the sum of squares for the error and then we're going to divide by the sample size minus the number of groups. So we'll talk a little bit more about why that's the denominator later. All right, so we have the variability between groups, the variability within groups. Now we need to talk about, well, what is the total variability? And very conveniently, the total variability is just the variability within groups plus the variability between groups. Okay, so we're going to denote the total variability by SSBO. And what we're going to do is just compare each observation against that overall mean. All right, so this differs from like this one because here we're measuring the variability compared to each group's sample mean. Here we're comparing it to the overall mean. So take every observation, find the distance between that and the overall mean, square it, add all of those up. So that's the total sum of squares. Okay, so intuitively, if we are looking at the total variability, it can really only come from two sources. It can either arise because of error, in other words, variability within groups, or it can arise because the treatments um, are different. So in other words, the variability between groups. So that means that the total sum of squares is equal to the treatment sum of squares plus SSB. And then mathematically, if you want to think about it that way, um, if you write this out and then expand it, you'll see that the cross term is actually zero. And they go through that in the book if you would like to check that out.